We are live in the studio now with Ward 1 Councillor Greg Norton. Greg, thank you for joining us. Thanks for the invite to be here. And uh, and uh, I guess kudos to, uh, to Ken Marshall and his team at Rogers Communication for what they've done to help build a really interconnected um, uh, city of St. John. Uh, it's so important for poverty reduction and making sure that we're all, we're all connected through that World Wide Web. So um, a great initiative by uh, Rogers Communication. No better place to say thanks to them than right here in studio. So, Perfect. Thank well, you. On behalf of that company, I'll uh, accept your uh, accept your thank you. Thanks so much. It is it is really good. I mean, the internet now is more important even than a home telephone. So. Absolutely. Um, so, we have uh, Mayor Frederick and Mike O'Neill. Sure. Was uh, was on the show a couple of weeks ago. We were talking about how in Fredericton right. they've been doing things by committee uh, and then bringing the sort of the results of those committee discussions to council to be either approved or disapproved or sent back to committee for further study right. uh, for 20, 30 years now. Um, St. John is, is now looking at this as an option. Uh, it was reasonably controversial. It was a 5-5 tie, which doesn't always happen here. The mayor had to break the tie. He had to vote twice that night, so he's uh, earning his paycheck at least. Um, why would someone be against doing the working committee? Well, uh, this this discussion or this debate regarding uh, moving, shifting uh, what we what we currently have for a governance structure towards a committee structure isn't anything new. Um, going back about four years ago, um, we had uh, we had a similar discussion three and a half years ago, possibly. Yeah. Um, and at that time, we invited the deputy mayor Stephen Chase, I believe, at the time, and uh, the city of Fredericton right. um, had had come in and delivered a, a similar presentation on 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 the merits. And and the challenges um, with uh, with the committee system, and you're right, Fredericton's been that way for for quite some time. But to get back to your question, why why would somebody um, not be in favor of this? There's like anything, there's some pros and cons. Sure. Um, as I understand it, um, with with any committee structure, it is it's more staff intensive um, as a result of uh, of more meetings, um, more agendas being published, um, more minutes that have to be produced, sure. and uh, and all of those things. Things. Um, there is an extra onus and extra pressure on staff to produce all of those things along with staff time and um, so that's one of the that's certainly one of the challenges the other challenge that's um, certainly or argument that's been brought up is the fact that as we as we move or transition to a possible full um, committee structure and right now we're just in a test test sure. phase a pilot phase um, that folks uh, feel um, if they're if they're on a committee and no longer uh, associated with any particular agency board or commission um, that uh, they no longer have their their pulse um, as close to the community or as close to the needs of those respective ABCs as they once did um, that they're a little bit further removed from the action if you will or or uh, or the or the needs um, that those uh, ABCs that they were once assigned to um, have so from uh, from a, a staff perspective as well as making sure that um, um, people are well connected especially counselors with their uh, with their respective ABCs, um, there's certainly some concerns about uh, a moving in this direction. Would it put a lot more strain on the uh, the time that councillors have to put forward for the city? Uh, my understanding is from the staff report um, that it would it would require that uh, every councillor would be uh, would be uh, obligated to serve on uh, on about two two committees right now. Right. Every councillor is serving on one. Um, in terms of hours, um, we're looking at about one to two hours um, a month in terms of committee meetings. Um, from a, from a councillor standpoint, um, it's uh, it's it's not it's it's not so much the weight or the extra work. Um, what will happen Happen is you uh, you will spend more time in one particular area um, than you have in uh, in in a number of other areas. Sure. So you become more of a specialist than a generalist, if you would say to use a to use a poor analogy. So if somebody was uh, somebody was appointed to public safety as as a result of that, you would be dealing with fire and police issues, um, EMO, um, those types of concerns, and uh, and you would be less involved with uh, things such as finance or growth or um, infrastructure, some of those sorts of things. So um, you'll be spending more of your time focused in uh, in, in one area, but um, I, I believe that overall the time, the time balances itself, yes. Right. We, we very recently moved to a ward system in St. John. Right. So is there a concern maybe amongst councillors that that would take them, again, out of that 
a situation where they're they're supposed to be focused on all of the needs of their ward and make them look particularly at one or two things that affect the entire city. The uh, absolutely when you're when you're looking at a ward perspective, obviously you, uh, all of the committees that have been designed or contemplated um, would uh, would have uh, your wards would would touch each of those. So um, whether it's public safety or whether it's um, infrastructure, or whether it's external affairs, um, wards have an interest in all of those and and um, when you are not assigned to one of those committees yeah there's there's an opportunity to lose focus and 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 not know as much detail or in-depth discussion um, that's going on there um, one of the things that is reassuring at least from a, a, a counselor perspective is the fact that all of those final decisions and all of those recommendations are always brought back to the council as a whole um, so there's always opportunity to ask committee members to look at um, to look at the analysis the staff reports and the recommendations that are being brought forward um, so that you can have a careful consideration and know that if you have to send something back to committee because you're not quite satisfied in terms of the interest for your award that there's opportunity to do so so although you may you may lose uh, focus or involvement in some of the other areas there's still opportunity to make sure that you give a careful eye and look at some of those things that are being brought forward to council as a whole right so the the briefings and all of that would still be available so there's not a real problem that maybe folks feel that they wouldn't be on a level playing field anymore, that maybe one counselor would know a whole lot about a particular subject and you're just kind of there to rubber stamp it because you don't know any better. Abs absolutely, John. I think that's that's uh, that's well said and and, um, and I think that's one of the things that, uh, that, that some counselors have thought that might be a concern to them if we transition in this way and I think that's really where um, going ahead and uh, having everybody right now um, being involved with either a finance committee or uh, the other committee is a is a is a growth and development committee right now we can really see how that works and uh, and one of the one of the certainly the strong benefits is that those ABC's that fall within those umbrellas have a chance to come and have um, a, a longer discussion a more detailed discussion with those respective committees that they're assigned to um, rather than 10 o'clock at night where council may be exhausted in the, the third they're the third uh, committee presentation in sure. the you. So um, it will allow for uh, a, a bit of a refresh in that perspective. Do you think it would make the proceedings of these particular areas more or less transparent to the public if they're interested in looking at it? Yeah, I think if I think if somebody is if somebody is certainly interested, um, I would push, and I, I have pushed throughout my last four years, and will continue to push. Um, we are we are closest to the people, which means uh, that that everything that we do should be should be an open, and we always advocate right. for that. Um, commit meetings I understand are going to be open um, maybe what it will do though is it will allow um, the citizens to uh, particular pick a particular interest point a focal sure. point and um, and knowing if they're interested in growth or finance or the city's infrastructure concerns or public safety or uh, intergovernmental affairs that they can attend those particular committee meetings uh, rather than endure sometimes what is uh, a rather a rather lengthy sure. um, council meeting that has things that are of no relevance to them at all so the committee meetings would be open and that's a key difference between the model in st. John and the model in Fredericton if I'm not mistaken yeah. My my understanding is that in Fredericton some are open and some are okay. some are closed. Um, I have heard concerns uh, depending on when those committee meetings sure. are scheduled. Um, they're either more accessible or less accessible for folks. Of but uh, in uh, if folks are unable to be there and they're absent, that's where we have we always make sure that we have detailed minutes and we make that documentation very clear. Uh, especially with uh, our city's open data initiative, where our common clerk does a fantastic job making sure that documentation is right. available. And any committees that you happen to sit on, you'd be tweeting all the results of. Well, there you, there you go, John. And I hope that I'm, I hope I'm doing that tonight as well. So, yeah. um, one thing that we haven't talked about is what would be the best reason to do something like this. So you, yeah. you voted in favor of it, I so did. clearly you would have, uh, you would have a stake on that side. I did. Uh, one of the reasons why I'm certainly in favor of this is, uh, is throughout my last four, four years, what I, what I've seen is I've seen um, agencies, boards, and commissions come in on an annual basis. Basis. Um, whereas we were looking to have them come in much more regularly, having a committee structure will provide um, 
more interval opportunities for those agencies, boards and commissions to come in mm -hmm. and report to those committees. Um, it will also give councillors a better opportunity to, uh, to dive into a particular interest area, um, some of the challenges that a particular ABC may be having, and, and really become more of an expert um, uh, in a particular subject area than we are sure. now. Um, I think it's more fair for the people that certainly work in those particular areas, and uh, it would certainly align to some of the interests that we have around the council horseshoe as well, so that they can they can really delve into some of the issues uh, more aggressively, if you will. Sure. At the end of the day, I guess what I'm looking for is I'm looking for a governance structure that brings forth um, better policy, stronger policy, better recommendations, and better decision making. So anything that helps um, get us to that point where we improve upon the decisions that we're already making, I'm in full favor. If that means a little bit of extra time here and there, or if that means that I don't get to uh, get my fingers in the cookie jar, but I have my arms around the jar itself, right. then, I'm, then I'm all for that. Well, if you've got your arms around the jar, you can run off. There you go, I can get out of there. <laughs> um, how would this have, and maybe it wouldn't have, but how, how do you think this would have changed the way that the city would have dealt with something like uh, the pension reform during your last mandate yeah. or the uh, Irving Oil Headquarters uh, bylaw changes yeah. uh, at the end of the last mandate? That's, uh, you know, that, that's, a, that's a good question, I think, uh, because of some of the challenges that the previous council had to, had to grapple with, whether, whether it was the pension crisis, um, whether it was a safe, clean drinking water file. Sure. Um, there was uh, there was a there was a number there was a number of issues we never we never got there um, and we're hoping that the the last council took some of those some of those large albatrosses that were around our neck and it, it's allowing us to take a, a, a better look at a better look at this I'm hoping that um, I'm satisfied with the decisions that the previous council made on some of those big files um, I guess uh, I guess I would say in an ideal world I, I would hope that those committees would bring forth um, similar recommendations and uh, and and, and, and if, if that was the case, then uh, I guess uh, you know we'll never we'll never know. But um, going forward, uh, I think we've certainly got a we've got a table that's set and ready for uh, for a new system of government that can can look at things in a much more clear, focused way. Right. So the mayor broke the tie. Yeah. This is something that we'll probably have to revisit. Right. Do you think that it's working? The pilot is working, and that and it's too early to tell. And I think that's the purpose of the pilot. I think, and uh, especially for some of the people that voted in favor of moving in this way, it was it was the very fact that look, um, this isn't something permanent. We're not going to abandon everything that we have before. Sure. I'm still going to be associated with some of the agencies, boards, and commissions that I've had. Yet I'll get to try something else um, out in a couple months. We'll go ahead and we'll do a thorough diagnostic and see what's working, what's not working. If if council, and as we know that the will of council prevails, if they're if they're comfortable, we'll go ahead and we'll adopt a couple more committees, um, and we'll keep on forging ahead. Um, but uh, but I, I'm I'm optimistic that this is certainly a system that's worked very well for other municipalities, um, where councillors can uh, can can get together as a group of five, um, develop a much more cohesive team, right. a team that is uh, is certainly brought together by similar and common and interests and uh, and bring forth really strong recommendations that lead to better policy, better governance, and, and better decision-making at the council table. Sure. Well, we'll have to wait and see on that Absolutely. one. Absolutely. Uh, before we sat down, you were talking to me about an initiative that you put together, you put forward on Monday that uh, that didn't pass the table. Do you want to do you want to take a minute and talk? Yeah. About yes. That? There was there was certainly there was a, certainly a couple motions and uh, and I, I accept the uh, the the will of council, um, knowing that priority setting sessions haven't haven't happened yet around. Yeah. Uh, the council horseshoe um, my my number one concern is always is always my ward sure um, I was elected in Ward one um, Ward one concerns and priorities are near and dear to my heart um, and advocating on their behalf is something that I've uh, I, I, I've always done and will continue to do I uh, brought forth a, a list of priorities um, everything from uh, the Dominion Park Beach area right. that's listed in play SJ that I believe needs the attention that other similar parks have or whether it was the Golden Mile corridor study right. 
that he brought forth a list of those priorities. Uh, no one seconded it, so it died on the table and no further discussion could be had. Um, the, the other motion that was brought forth uh, recently was um, a motion to, uh, to go ahead and, and adopt a award activity fund that would allow um, small groups or organizations to access um, a, uh, a, a pool of money that's designated for award that right now the municipal grant process doesn't doesn't uh, address in either a timely fashion or, uh, or, or at all for some of these groups. Um, we know that we have uh, many, many nonprofit organizations that do great work in our city. Um, they, uh, they, quickly, uh, they quickly access those funds, but for uh, the Little League baseball team or whether sure. it's the church group or the community group that's looking to do some of those things in your neighborhood, whether it's a cleanup or whether it's a fundraiser and they need, uh, they need garbage bags or they need a barbecue where they can right. go to their ward counselor. And if they apply and there's a process, that there's money that's reserved for your particular ward where they can access by filling out the proper paperwork and if they're applicable then they can they can they can have access to some of those resources so i guess it's bringing opportunity to uh, as close to the ground as it possibly can and uh and that motion died four to five but it was it was merely a recommendation to bring it back for uh council's uh, consideration but i'm sure. um, pleased that council did support the immigration strategy and i think that's uh that's certainly something that we can bring together and uh, it's something we've stronger. been doing very well on over uh, the last Absolutely, and it's not. It's uh, it's just meant to bring some groups together and create a less fragmented approach. And and kudos to people like uh, the St. John Multicultural Newcomers Resource Center and the Y. They do uh, they do world class work. So we're happy to have them. Uh, when we were chatting before, you know, I, I was half kidding when I said sure. award activities fund sounds like something councillors would be all <laughs> over. But what do you what do you think it was that uh, the five councillors didn't didn't like about it? Yeah, I think it, it was certainly something. And I and I should say, you know. This isn't. It wasn't. It wasn't an original thought that I had. It was looking at other jurisdictions in my experience the last four years. Is knowing that when you uh, when you tell somebody to apply through the municipal grants process, by the right. time they get there, it's not. It can't turn around quick enough, or or, or they're they're not eligible because the funds aren't there, or they right. don't qualify. Or and if so, you need sixty dollars to order pizza for you, an event two weeks from now, it's probably not worth the time. You exactly, and that and that's it. We know that some of our best organizations, like One Change in the old North End started small and they grew up big and finding that seed money or that startup money is a challenge and uh, and I, uh, I I think uh, looking at Halifax they had a solution yep. and it was that's that's the policy that I, I looked at and brought that forth and and my understanding is it's worked really well for uh, right. for for over a decade so um, I don't Except think on the odd occasion when a counselor orders an animatronic uh, the way yep. <laughs> and that's why I didn't want to be named a counselor's a counselor's activity fund yep. knowing very well all that um, it's not our activities that we would uh, we would be funding or supporting but um, you're you're right John that's probably exactly where some of them were coming from that um, when we don't have an understanding of things or we're uncomfortable or we're we're uh, we're satisfied with how things are working uh, people people vote in their favor and uh, and I certainly accept the uh, the will of council for that Fantastic. Greg, thank you for uh, for coming in to talk to us tonight. Your uh, brother was here a couple of weeks ago to talk about his run for uh, Premier Leader of the Progressive Conservative Party first, I guess. But, uh, there we go. I'm uh, trying to uh, get all the punches on my uh, Norton family punch card. <laughs> it's time. <laughs> Good stuff. Thank you very much. S stay with us. We'll be back with Eric Scouten. We're going to be talking about a bartending cocktail mixing competition in Fredericton. He'll correct me on that when he gets in here. Stay with us.